Good morning, everyone. I've made myself an omelette, as per usual. My delicious chickpea omelette. I've got my smoothie with my protein powder from Wild Nutrition. I've just taken my supplements. I'm gonna write in my gratitude journal for the day. And today we're gonna be doing a q and I have been thinking a lot recently about weight, body image, body confidence, and talking with a lot of you about it. It's something I've been opening up a lot more about because I noticed that when I do, it really resonates and it helps so many of you because you're going through the same thing. Whether you've gained weight in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and you're reflecting on your body before, whether you are experiencing a struggle with your food, with uh, eating disorder, disordered eating habits, getting sucked back into diet culture, just not feeling good about yourself. I just wanna be there for you. I wanna be that kind of big sister or little sister, I don't know how old you are watching, um, or friend who can, I guess, help you understand that I'm going through it. I don't have all the answers. I experienced this too. I've gained weight. Lots of you have commented on it. It can be very difficult when that happens, when people comment on your weight gain and when you are aware of it and your body is different to what it used to be. So this is the first episode of a new series I'm doing. I really hope that you stick with me, hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, leave me a comment. I'm gonna be sharing lots of my thoughts on this, providing you hopefully with a safe place, a caring place to help you take care of yourself and the focus be moved away from hating yourself or hating your body to looking after yourself and looking after your body in a really lovely way and a cozy way, a comforting way. I'm here if you are, have gained weight, you need to stay away from focusing on losing weight and you want to focus instead on feeling good about yourself. So I asked on Instagram to let you guys ask anything about body image, weight loss, weight gain, all that kind of stuff, and eating, and we're just gonna answer the questions today. Just a trigger warning, we're gonna be talking about weight loss, weight gain, eating disorders, disordered eating, food, all of those topics. So if that is difficult for you to listen to, skip this video. How do you accept your new body? I'm really struggling, fab clothes don't fit. I really struggle with this. You probably notice it's a comment I have from people about how I often wear loose fitting clothing. I do struggle and it's something that probably is what I'm currently working on. It's a focus of mine recently that I've been trying to wear more fitted clothes, embrace my new shape, buy clothes that fit me now. Just accept where I am instead of thinking that what I was before is better or I should be kind of going back to that, accepting what I am now because the reality is I know in myself I fluctuate. I've been one size at one point, then this size and then I've gone back. So it, it changes for me. So therefore, why shouldn't I have a wardrobe with all of those fluctuations and changes so that I don't have to feel stressed by it? I think one of the best ways to accept your new body is to accept it as it is now and not think about changing it. That can be very difficult because you can romanticize your previous body. It can be easy to fall back into this state of mind where you're constantly thinking, I wanna get back there. Just try and focus on things outside of uh, your body that you wanna work on. That's something I found really helpful. Work, focusing on things within work, focusing on things within your mental health, things like journaling or friendships or relationships. So if you're romanticizing your previous body, and you're constantly living in this state of mind of, I wanna get back there. Yeah, find other things that you can focus on that you can look forward to to improve. You could also maybe journal about your body, maybe think about the things that you're grateful for with your body. So for example, if that is your main struggle currently, if you have something like a five minute journal, make one of the gratitudes every day to do with your body. I'm grateful for my strength to stand up every day and get on with my day or i'm grateful for my legs for my for the walking i do every morning i'm grateful for my eyes that i can see the beautiful nature outside my window with maybe there's something about your body that you do love maybe you have beautiful hair so you can say i'm grateful for my beautiful hair or i'm grateful for my freckles on my cheeks and that could be a way of accepting the things that you like about yourself but also the things that your body provides you that are outside of looks and aesthetics. That's where I would begin. But I'm gonna have my breakfast and then we'll come back for question number two. 
Help with black and white thinking when trying to get fit. I spiral so quickly. Boy, can I relate. Spiraling and overthinking and becoming a bit all or nothing is just my entire life. The best thing I can advise when it comes to black and white thinking is have the awareness that it's part of your way of doing things. Maybe it's your personality, maybe it's the way your brain works, maybe it's the way you were brought up, or even just the way you were taught in school. Is a lot of black and white thinking, a lot of kind of extremes this way or the highway. <laughs> so I know that now that is why I have those issues and potentially it's just the way I'm inclined in my head to be a bit of a perfectionist. I would just recommend that you gain that awareness of yourself and I would re-recommend therapy. I have had a lot of therapy on this exact thing. It's kind of what my introduction to therapy was, was through this kind of black and white thinking, this extremism in my head where I had to do it one way and if I didn't do it that way perfectly, then that's it. And it's extremely toxic and unrealistic and it just doesn't relate to real life. And if you are looking for therapy, then I have spoken about BetterHelp before. They are the paid partnership for today's video. I speak about them regularly to you lot because it is a resource that I think can be really helpful and accessible for a lot of people. There are barriers when it comes to therapy. It could potentially be that you're a bit nervous to go speak to somebody in person. BetterHelp is all via online. So you can do it on the phone, you can do it via messages or via video call. And also there's a barrier of maybe the timing that it takes to seek out therapy. BetterHelp is excellent in that if you go do their quiz, you do like a quick quiz on what you are after when it comes to therapy, what your struggles are, what you're facing, they'll assign you to a credentialed therapist. And then usually within 48 hours, you are assigned to somebody who is gonna be there to listen and there to help. If you're not sure on the therapist that you've been assigned to, you can also change that. You can say, I would like to be uh, paired with somebody different. There's just a lot of flexibility and accessibility, which is why I always talk about them as sort of an opportunity for maybe some of you to seek out therapy. All you have to do is click the link down below, answer a few questions and BetterHelp will pair you with a professional who has years of experience with the struggles that you're facing. So in this instance, if it's body image, if it's anxiety around this sort of black and white thinking and this extreme tendencies, that can be what you can share that you've faced a struggle with. And you can do this from the comfort of your own home in the way that you feel happy to do so. And if you use my link when you sign up, you get a special discount for your first month. So if therapy is something that you've been considering, it could be an opportunity to give it a go and see how it works for you and if it potentially helps whatever it is you're dealing with. Obviously it goes without thinking if you think that this is an extreme issue that you're facing where you have exercise addiction or you have an eating disorder, please speak to your doctor and actually validate the fact that this is something that you're spiraling on. You've said that you have black and white thinking and you feel like you're spiraling whenever you do this. That could be something that you can handle and that you can speak to a therapist about and deal with on your own. But if you think that it's more serious than that, it's interfering with everything in your life and it's impacting you negatively and becoming dangerous, then please go to your doctor and actually validate the fact that this is something that's hurting you and get professional help because I feel like I struggled with that for so long that I had these kind of secretive habits where I was really harming myself and I didn't didn't give myself the care to say, actually, this is really harmful, you need to get professional help with this. It isn't ever gonna get you anywhere but in a stressful state, even if you reach your dream body. I highly, highly doubt that you're gonna be at your dream body in a place where you're happy. So really learn who you are as a person, find your joys, find your passions and balance that with wanting to be fit or wanting to get healthy and eat healthy and then those things don't need to be extreme you can fit it into your life in a way that makes sense because if exercise or food is becoming extreme and it's black and white it's going to interfere with the day-to-day -day things like birthdays like going on holiday like waking up a bit later or just wanting to enjoy your life so that would be my best recommendation. Learn who you are up here. Do you think your pre-wedding weight loss came from the right place mentally? So pre-wedding, I lost weight. I spoke to a nutritionist. I got a personal trainer. For me personally, it was uh, coming from a place of wanting to take care of myself. At the time, I had been in therapy for a while. I had been through quite a difficult period of my life with my mental health. I had developed really extreme health anxiety, was having regular panic attacks. I had 
loads of things going on and I had gained weight. I gain weight when I get stressed and my mental health is bad because I turn to habits like overeating or drinking or I'm not, I don't take care of myself because it all goes out the window when my brain is too full. And then we had to plan for our wedding and it actually gave me something really positive to focus on. So for me personally, it was something that was quite positive for me. I actually spoke with my therapist about this because I said, I feel really uncomfortable in my current body because I had gained a lot of weight due to a lot of stress and depression. I connected my body with kind of my state of mind and it was becoming quite difficult for me because me being bigger was because of me having a difficult time. That isn't the case for everybody and I really want to preface this with that because it could be the opposite way around for somebody else. I've also had it the opposite way around where me losing weight and being smaller has represented me struggling and having a difficult time. So it can be both. But for me at that particular time, that was that was what had happened to me. And so pre-wedding, I romanticized the wedding because I am like that, which is what lots of us do. And I wanted the, my wedding day to be a day I look back on that is the happiest day of our lives. And I wanted to feel like me, look like me, look back at photos and think, there she is, she looks after herself, she's, she's, you know, she's come this far and just remember that time in my life and it gave me something to have a goal for. So I just basically tried to do all the things that would make me feel good and look after myself. And I spoke about it on the channel, I saw a nutritionist, I got a personal trainer, but I also worked on myself as a person and I had lots more healthy habits. The wedding was very motivational for that. So yes, I lost weight and it was, intentional in that I wanted to just be my, feel, my, feel like me, go back to a healthy size that I felt happy in. And then post wedding, I think I had wedding blues and it just kind of, I just forgot about it realistically. And then since that time, we've been married for a year and a half, right? We get married in 2021. Oh my God, been, Alex. So we got married in 2022 in September. So it's been nearly two years. I've since <laughs> getting married, been through some struggles again. I've had some resurgence of mental health problems, which I'm looking into and trying to work on now. That has resulted in weight gain because of all the things I mentioned, bad habits, not looking after myself, um, overeating, drinking, not exercising, not, not looking after myself, which for me personally results in weight gain. There's no kind of secret thing happening. It's pretty basic for me personally why that happened. I'm learning to accept that that's life. So I can't beat myself up if I was going through a difficult time here, how am I gonna do the things that look after my body? It also doesn't mean that this body I have currently is, a, is bad in any way or um, worse than what it was for my wedding day. And maybe those things helped me in those times when I was feeling down, maybe me eating you know, snacking in the evenings or eating comfort food or, you know, sleeping in instead of exercising. Maybe those actually supported me during those times when I was struggling. And there, I shouldn't beat myself up for that or think of that as bad because maybe that's what I needed. And so that's okay. And obviously there are those traps of diet culture that remain and those kind of images when you're growing up that your wedding day, you're supposed to be the most beautiful version of yourself. So I won't sit here and pretend that I didn't have that pressure on my shoulders as a woman who is online and who lots of people are gonna see these videos and photos. So I obviously had that pressure on my shoulders. I probably put that pressure on myself too because that's the type of person I am. But I don't look back and think of it negatively. I kind of think of it quite nicely and positively because I was so happy at that time. That's, that's what I'll say about the wedding and maybe there'll be a future moment when there's something else that means that I lose weight or I gain weight. Yeah, it's just life. If men didn't exist for a week, would you still feel uncomfortable in certain clothes and in your body? For me, yes, I would, because most people who are perceiving me are women, obviously on the internet. I think it's like 95% or 96% of you are women watching me. And then in my day-to-day -day life, I only have Alex, my dad, and my brother-in-law who really is around me regularly on a weekly basis. Out and about, genuinely at my age, I don't really give a crap what men think when they look at me. Like, I, it's not really something that bothers me and I don't know that it really ever has. I think that my um, uncomfortableness has either been because of just my own pressure on myself, but also the competition with other women. And I think that this is a feminist issue and this is a patriarchal issue that we all have internalized sexism that we have literally been indoctrinated with since we were children. We all grew up, or people my age grew up, 
uh, with magazines with women plastered over the covers with circles, little ticks and points going, what's this flabby bit? Oh gosh, she's really let herself go or who is this girl? We don't even recognize her. She's so different or cellulite. And you know, the, the hatred for women and women's bodies is unbelievable. The fat phobia is unbelievable. It is everywhere. The privilege that you have if you are skinny compared to if you are fat is a thing we can't deny anymore. Like, that people even get ignored to the point of people going to the doctors and their health problems are ignored because doctors can focus on their weight more than they can on what the actual issue is. And I'm obviously not speaking about all doctors, but this is an experience that some people have in larger bodies where they go to the doctor and they can't get an answer for their health problem because they're just told to lose weight. And I can't even speak from the experience of somebody who is in a plus sized body because I am mid-sized. So I have a privilege for the body that I live in. And when I was smaller, I had a privilege for that body. I think if I lived in a world where men never existed, then I would be fine because there wouldn't be a patriarchy. So there wouldn't be a benefit or a pressure. The reason that women pit each other against one another and there is competition and there is this pressure to be skinny or to have the perfect body that is never attainable because even women with perfect bodies hate their bodies is because of the patriarchy because realistically you are further down on the podium so what what do you bring what do you offer and women are very sexualized women are kind of treated and put in a box you know your, your body your image your your looks are a part of your power as a woman in this world this is not me saying that that's true by the way that that's just the way that it, the world is and obviously we've come a long way but we've also lot, taken a lot of steps back i think if men didn't exist and we could as women just have a world that was much more peaceful then yes i think that i would feel way more comfortable but unfortunately it's ingrained and it's innate and it's not it's not we're not able to remove it unfortunately because it's us as women who have a lot of i don't know we have we have unfortunately been conditioned and it's not even conditioning it's just the world we live in that you kind of have to to lot a lot for a lot of women they have to partake because that's their only option I, I feel it's very sad that we have a lot of women been kind of taught and unconsciously taught that our body is kind of a representation of our power in this world or our uh, success. That if you are beautiful and skinny, then that means you have achieved something or you have something that other women don't. And that's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I think a lot of that is because of, because of, because of the sexualization of women and because of the privilege we don't have that men do so yeah i'm gonna clean the kitchen now because i could talk about that for hours and it's a complicated subject to summarize <laughs> and i can't answer a simple question without becoming very deep so i will come back to you with the next one right so here's a good one i often feel not thin enough for an event special occasion or opportunity any advice on how to deal with that i think this is something that literally every woman could relate to because it's those times those special events where you have to wear a nice dress put on a pair of heels, do your makeup, where you feel very under pressure to be this perfect version of yourself, that is just unrealistic. And I can almost guarantee that every single woman at that special event feels the same way. They feel like their body isn't like maybe what they used to be, or they feel stressed about their outfit. I feel like it's such a universal problem. So my best advice would be to accept that your body is the way it is currently and focus on what your body has that is beautiful you don't have to love your body because that is maybe something that's too much for a lot of us but find yourself an, an outfit borrow an outfit find a dress in your wardrobe something that's going to make you feel really really great and this is hard too because i know that like shopping for clothes when you don't feel good about your body is really challenging i try and learn what clothes really make me feel good when i'm in them so pay attention to that I know that if I was to be going to an event right now, I would pick a dress that was fitted on the top, give me a bit of cleavage because in this bigger body, I've got nice big boobs now so I can show them off. Whereas before I didn't. I've got big boobs so I can show them off. They look great in a tight fitting dress that then skirts out under the bust and is a bit longer because I'm tall so I could show off 
the length of my body. That is something that I like about my body. And then I can put some heels on that accentuate my legs and the fact that I'm tall. And I also really like my hair so I can wear my hair down because I know that's the way that makes me feel the best and style it in a really nice way. So that's just an example of a way to understand your body in the way that it is now. Forget about what it used to be like. If you used to be skinnier, if you used to have something that you loved about your body that you don't like anymore, what is it now that you think is worth accentuating? And if you even struggle to answer that, maybe you could get help from a family member or a friend and say, I'm going to this event, I've no idea what to wear. What outfits do you think look best on me? What outfits, or what, do you, is there a dress in my wardrobe that you think looks really good on me? it's likely that there's something that you really look amazing in. Have that confidence because you're wearing something that you know you feel amazing in. Or is there a, is there a memory that you have where you were wearing something in particular that you just like felt, felt really, really good? Being thin doesn't mean that you're gonna be more beautiful. Like not feeling thin enough at an event, like think of all the benefits that not being thin can offer you. There's so many things that can be said for not being thin. Like it's so frustrating that thinness is the only thing that we celebrate because if you are bigger maybe you've got bigger boobs maybe you've got amazing hips maybe you've got a fuller face which makes you look really youthful think about the things that your body has currently in the way that is it is now and that's what I do to help and actually realistically when you do that people go oh my gosh you look really nice because on holiday I wore a dress that so many of you were like oh that looked really great and in the video I was like oh it's not very flattering I feel a bit like it's a bit too tight and everyone was like no that was like the perfect fit for you and it looked really good and that's just my insecurities coming into play so pay attention to that. How to deal with others talking about diet culture and body image and food guilt. I have a lot of experience in this because I have had an eating disorder in the past. None of my friends have had eating disorders, but they all are women who have disordered, have had disordered eating habits because you'd be like very lucky to not have experienced some effects of diet culture and poor body image as a woman in this day and age. So I have gone through that journey where I've been recovering from an eating disorder and been around friends who are heavily dieting, friends who are criticizing their bodies and the way that I navigate it is either I try and like plant the seed that maybe what they're doing isn't the most healthy so like if they're trying to do an extreme thing I could say oh you know is that actually you know is that a good idea or like you know not pressure them or judge them but just if they're talking about doing an extreme diet just being like you know maybe maybe you could try try this instead that might not be so extreme or you know don't I try like give them like the 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 confidence that they don't have to do that. They could just, you know, they don't need to skip lunch. Maybe they should just have a lunch that would make them feel good. That is a, like an example. You can be honest with them and just say, look, I've had a bit of a tough time recently with food and diets. And so I don't love talking about this, if that's okay. Like I understand you're on this this journey or you're, you're trying to lose weight or you're thinking about your food. But for me currently, I just, oh, I can't, I don't think I can, I can talk about it. It's all right if we just change the subject. And I know that's really confrontational, but it can be quite a positive thing to like work on on being open with people. And I don't know that anyone's gonna be like, oh gosh, this is ridiculous. Like, I feel like most reasonable, pe reasonable people are gonna, would say, yeah, no, that's fine. Like I'll, I'll talk to someone else about it or um, I won't bring it up in, around you. And you don't have to make it about them. You have to criticize them for what they're doing because that's their own experience and they may not be having a negative one, but you can also protect the fact that it's just not a subject that you are capable of talking about right now. You can suggest something else to talk about or um, or even have a vulnerable moment with them and, and open up and say, yeah, I just really struggled in the past with food and diets. And so I'm now focusing on, um, you know, hobbies that I'm passionate about or like my mental health and it's really working for me and I'm finding that really positive. And one of those things is asking people to just not talk about food around me, which has nothing to do with you. Like you do you, but for me that that's really helping me and it can maybe build your, or, or strengthen your friendship. But also you can just actively not engage. Like if you're in a room and people are talking about that, you don't have to actually bring anything up in conversation. You can just be quiet. You can just move the conversation elsewhere. If they start asking you or trying to involve you, you can just change the subject. I found that works pretty well. Like if someone's talking about diets or about things that I don't really want to talk about or that I don't agree with, or I think 
I've been there, I don't really want to be doing that anymore. I just be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I get that. And then just, you just change the subject because that's sometimes just the easiest way to do it because you're just not interested. So just have the confidence to change the subject or just be brutally honest that you don't want to talk about it. Or if you feel comfortable, you could offer an alternative viewpoint and try and help out that friend if they're, if they're, if they're talking about that. There's a couple questions about body image in your 20s. What do you wish you could tell yourself in your early 20s? What would your body image advice for your 20 year old self be? I love these questions because I really wish I could do this. I wish I could go back to my 20s and tell myself to stop being so harsh on myself and just to love the body I'm in because it's ironic that I look back now and think, how did I have any body image issues? Because I think think now I looked I mean I, I look back and think oh my gosh I look great and I know that in 10 years time I'm gonna look back at now and tell myself oh my god what the hell was wrong with you you looked great hindsight is 100 and it is like it's just crazy to me I would literally say that I would say to my 20 year old self find other things in your life that you can focus on and well, no, actually, because that's very easy to say if you don't have those resources, I would tell my 20 year old self to go and get help because I didn't get help for a really long time. I dealt with an eating disorder for about five or six years, didn't ever see a therapist. And I would tell myself, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. You need professional help. This is an illness. Go to the doctor, get professional help and overcome your issue with food now. Don't leave it because I really regret how long I left it, how long I kept it a secret, how like people around me were there for me, but they can't help me. They don't, they're not professionals. They don't know what to do. And I needed a professional to come in and say, look, this is what you need to do. And you need to have therapy. You need medication. You need whatever it is to actually overcome it so that I didn't have to then spend years and years by myself trying to overcome it and falling back. And that's what I would say. And I would say there are so many bigger things in this world that are worth your time than your body and your weight because you look amazing you're young enjoy being young enjoy you know show your body off and love it and feel, have that confidence do some work on your inner self to feel that confidence um because i just think that i really internalized a lot of my insecurities and lack of self-confidence from university from the pressure i put on myself i i internalized all of that and ended up with an eating disorder because i was so out of control in myself and didn't know where to turn. I would I would just go to the doctor, get a diagnosis and get professional help because I probably wouldn't have struggled for so many years had I done that. How do you stay away from scales at the gym? It's so hard to resist even though it's bad for me. So I actually haven't weighed myself, I think since like 2016, 2017. I think the last time was either at home, maybe when I was trying to lose weight at that time, or it was when we were at Adrenaline Quarry in Cornwall, we went for Alex's birthday. And I remember they weighed us because of the ride or the, we had to be weighed before we did the jump. And I was so triggered by that. I was like, I did not expect to be weighed and I did not want to know how much I weighed because when I saw how much I weighed, I was like, whoa, that was way more than when I last weighed myself. So I'm just propping up my phone. I know that some people like to weigh themselves just so that they know for their own information and they don't find it triggering. Fine, if you find it triggering, you have to set yourself the goal of not using the gyms, sorry, using the gym scale. My gym has a scale. I walk past it every day, but I don't, it's just, I've actively chosen that I know that that is a trigger. So give yourself the challenge of going a week at first, write down in your, in your phone, one week without weighing myself. And then when you achieve that, tick that. Two weeks without weighing myself, then you can tick that. Four weeks without weighing myself and you can tick that. Set yourself a challenge. If you make it to 30 days, then uh, you can maybe celebrate in some way and really acknowledge what you've achieved. And that could be in just journaling. You could journal what, what that helped you with. Maybe it helped you to feel more confident in the gym. Maybe you weren't so preoccupied. Maybe you didn't have as many food triggers. Maybe you weren't thinking so much about food on the day to day because you weren't thinking about your weight as much because you didn't know how much you weighed. There's so many benefits. And then maybe if that is all the case, you could celebrate by buying yourself a new dress or going for a nice meal or, you know, having an afternoon where you just do nothing and you relax and read a book. If it's if the scales are triggering, it's quite a tangible thing. Don't, just don't weigh yourself. Don't, uh, when you go to the doctors, ask them to not tell you what it is or you close your eyes and say, I have a trigger with scales. Could you just not tell me how much I weigh? 
and you don't need to know what is it what, what benefit does it give you to be honest with you for me I don't need to know what what will I gain from knowing what weight I am I can see in the mirror you know and if you're feeling really shit about your body dance and move it because it guaranteed to make you feel better it's lunch time i had to change my dress because in true maddie fashion i pulled a bowl out of the fridge said bowl was filled i'm shaking my life at you with oil <laughs> so it went all over my dress i'm making alex and i toasties and maybe this will help those of you who struggle with food and having food rules because recently I noticed that I said this in a video recently that some of those have kind of creeped into my brain a bit sometimes and I I don't know how I think that happens maybe when you have a sort of a period of time where you're not feeling so good those kind of old habits die hard and I was having thoughts of like oh I shouldn't have this or I shouldn't do that or whatever so I'm trying to go against that currently and ignore it. The world doesn't come tumbling down if you eat your fear food. And I love bread, I love toasties. I also love pasta, I love salads, I love pizza, I love chocolate, I love curries, I love vegetables. You know, there's so many things in my life I enjoy and I shouldn't just say that I only enjoy certain things are only allowed certain things because it doesn't make any logical sense. How do you tell what is intuitive and what is ingrained society, food habits, etc.? I find it hard to know. This is a really good question because I probably sometimes get confused as well. I think a lot of the time what's intuitive to us is what is nostalgic to us. So what we grew up eating and I have noticed that those are the things I crave. So when I'm feeling sad, I definitely look to food for comfort. And I love things like uh, cheesy pasta, like mac and cheese. I love popcorn, crisps, chocolate, toasties, um, just foods that, I, even comfort foods like cottage pie, Marmite on toast, like things that I grew up eating and don't rid yourself of those. Like it would be so sad if you didn't get to enjoy those foods that are intuitively nostalgic that are within your childhood or your memories or things that you you've always enjoyed eating even things like curry now is nostalgic even though i didn't like it when i was a child me and alex have always loved curry so things like thai green curry or any any curry to be honest with you is a comfort food to me because it's something that both of us have always enjoyed eating we've always cooked them together when it comes to like what society has told you is healthy versus not healthy or a diet food or whatever Try and pay attention to when you eat food, how it makes you feel. So if you have something that is society's version of healthy, like a salad, if you have a big salad, does that make you feel full? Does it make you feel good? Do you like spend the rest of the afternoon and be like, I feel so nourished? Or does it depend on the kind of salad? Like, do you feel nourished when you have a salad that's got grains in it or more protein? And pay attention. And I think that that's, that's the thing with intuitive eating is it's educate, ed educated intuitive eating. And I kind of talked about this recently. So just pay attention essentially to what you're eating, how it makes you feel and try and blur out the rest of the noise. I'm gonna make this lovely toasty now. So we've got our delicious seeded wholemeal bread that Alex made. And that's a good thing to remember that bread is actually packed full of fiber and protein. Like wholemeal bread is actually surprisingly high in protein. And that's something I'd also recommend is to actually think about the nutrients in foods and think about them as what they bring you rather than thinking from a restricted point of view so what does this food provide me rather than what is it like what harm is it doing or having that fear around it this food this bread is homemade it's full of seeds full of wholemeal flour full of fiber full of protein we've got some cathedral city vegan cheese this is my favorite one that's full of delicious flavor and fats pesto is delicious as well and we've got some lovely salad which is full of goodness and this is going to be a very filling, satisfying lunch. That's another thing. It's going to be filling, satisfying, nos nostalgic for me because I always used to have toasties growing up. Oh my God, I forgot to butter it. Since I did the pesto, I'll put some butter on that. And it's actually going to keep me full for the rest of the day. So that's going to help me to work properly. And yeah, just focus on th those things and be mindful. I think that would be my best recommendation. Be mindful of um, your food when you're eating it and what it can provide you with.
it is such glorious weather. Tastes like summer, so good. I'm on a different sofa. I've literally, with you, sat on a, a window seat, my living room sofa, my outdoor sofa, and now we're in the garage living room. And we still call it the garage. You know how like for a while we were like, we're gonna call it the snug. It still is the garage. <laughs> so let's do a quick question because I think the battery might go in a minute, but I've had a really um, productive afternoon actually, planning lots of recipes. If you didn't know, I've got a website with loads of vegan recipes on and we recently redid it all. So if you are on a new journey with uh, food and recipes and you want to get into cooking and have like a positive relationship with food, go check my website out because there's so many plant-based recipes there that you can enjoy and maybe inject a little bit of happiness into your creating of food and uh, cooking again. <laughs> And you can bookmark it because there's new recipes every week and we've got a really exciting autumn winter coming. That's what I was doing this afternoon. I was planning all the recipes for autumn winter, loads of comfort foods, loads of homemade goods, autumnal and winter cozy recipes. That's the kind of vibe we're going for. So there'll be loads and loads coming this autumn winter. And maybe it can kind of give you that happiness and joy back to food if, you, if you're cooking lots of nourishing, yummy, cozy, comforting things. There's a few questions about veganism when it comes to eating disorders and my experience with them and whether I think that veganism lends itself to eating disorders, that kind of thing. This is something I have a lot of experience with because when I went vegan was kind of like my first step into recovery when it came to an eating disorder. So for context, I had an eating disorder at university and I was really struggling at the time. I was dealing with bulimia and just extreme dieting and binge eating. And I came across veganism online and this is how I went vegan. I watched a lot of documentaries, but I also followed a lot of kind of toxic people online who were sharing a very like diet and restrictive version of veganism. That was kind of the only example I saw online at the time. It was very hyper-focused on health and weight. I think that's what hooked me in. I think that it gave me a lot of, I don't know, a change of outlook when it came to food. It gave me a lot of positive things like not being restrictive and eating in abundance and looking at food in a positive way is something that can nourish me, but it kind of just replaced one diet with another. And it took a lot of years to undo that. So while I definitely stopped one eating disorder, I ended up with orthorexia and just becoming super, super hyper-focused on being obsessed with what food I was eating and the health of that food. It is dangerous. And I think that veganism does lend itself to that. And I think a lot of people who have eating disorders are pulled towards veganism because of its restrictive nature and because it's another way to lose weight or to be healthier and all of the above. So what I have done in my time of being vegan, because it matters to me morally and ethically, I care a lot about that kind of aspect of veganism. It's what's kept me vegan for 10 years. I have undone a lot of that diet culture mindset. So now I eat anything I want, but vegan. I eat vegan cheese, I eat vegan meat, I eat vegan chocolate. I don't restrict myself in that way. And therefore my mentality around it doesn't see it like that. So I don't think I'm restricting myself because I can just have chocolate. It just happens to be vegan. And that took me a long time. And my recommendation to my audience always is if you are struggling with an eating disorder, probably isn't the time to go vegan. Probably it's the time to recover. And then if morally you want to choose that choice and that lifestyle, go for it then. But be careful and be gentle with yourself that you're not just replacing one diet and eating disorder with another. How do you deal with people's comments about your body? So I get comments about my body every day, pretty much. And I also get a lot of people asking me if I'm pregnant because I'm a woman in her 30s who's gained weight. So therefore people assume it's because of pregnancy. Someone also asked about dealing with weight gain during pregnancy. I think that this is something that we just need to collectively understand that's really not okay. And I, I don't know why it's so normalized to comment on women's bodies throughout their life. One of the main factors that led up to me getting, getting an eating disorder in, in my late teens was because how much my body was commented on. I was very tall, I was six foot, or I am six foot, 
and very skinny growing up. So I used to get comments on my body a lot. People were always commenting on how tall I was, um, that I should model because I'm so tall, that I'm so skinny, that everything, you know, whatever. People were commenting on it a lot. It was something that just kind of almost defined me. And so when I went to university and gained weight from binge drinking and eating a lot and being away from home and stressed, it was a shock because my identity of what people used to always comment about, about me had gone. That was incredibly difficult for me because I almost defined myself by that. I suppose it was a lack of control when that happened. And then when I gained an eating disorder and lost a lot of weight, people then commented on that and said, oh my God, that's amazing. You've lost all the weight. How great. You look amazing. How did you do it? Little did they know that it was because I had an eating disorder. In the years that followed, when I've been online, I have fluctuated. I've been smaller and bigger and people have always remarked about it. Even before I notice it, people that comment, oh, you look like you've lost a bit of weight or, oh, you look like you've gained a bit of weight or, are you pregnant? Um, and it's really challenging. And I, I think we all need to do each other a favor by actively learning about how damaging that can be. So in your own personal life, I would really recommend, it's something that I do now, to just not comment on people's bodies. If you notice a friend has lost weight, just don't mention it. If you notice a friend has gained weight, don't mention it. If you have children in your life, try not to talk about their bodies too much. Don't comment too much on, oh gosh, you know, you're so skinny or you're so small or you're so tall or you're so big or you're, you know, I, I know that when I have kids, I'm going to really be careful about the things I comment about their appearance because it does then become internalised as a defining part of you. I think if we all did that, it would really help overall. I think if people do comment on it, um, I guess you have to think about whether there's a boundary you can set with them if someone's always commenting or you can say, I have a bit of self-confidence issues with my body. So is it okay if you don't mention that to me in the future? Like if, if it's like your mum or something who's always sort of saying, oh, you look like you've put on a bit of weight. Maybe just say to look, I have really bad body image confidence. So could you just try and not mention if you notice I've gained weight or lost weight? Cause it does like kind of play in my, in my mind. I know that some people will not listen to that or care. And in those instances, you just have to kind of take on board what I said earlier about they're just projecting. They have their own insecurities. They have their own kind of belief system that's probably been indoctrinated into them from their own childhood, especially if they're a woman. And so you have to kind of, I suppose, learn to just let it slide off your back and not um, break through the things you've learned and you've overcome. That's what I have to do. Whenever anyone says to me, are you pregnant or you've gained weight? I have to just go, do you know what? That's just, they're either not meaning to say it because they don't think it's offensive or maybe they're genuinely just curious because they care about my life and they want to know if I'm pregnant or they are commenting about my weight because they're insecure about their own and that's why they're noticing it. And especially if it's coming from a place of not being very nice, if they're saying it in a mean way. That's, that's kind of like, I try and just think that's just on them. It's really unfortunate that this is just the world we live in, that people think it's okay to comment on people's bodies. But the, the way I just do my bit is I just try not do it to other people. And if people do it to me, I just don't make a thing of it. And I don't, uh, yeah, I try not to internalize it too much. But yeah, it is, a, it is an ongoing struggle. So I think I'm gonna end the video there because I think I've talked a lot in this video. If you like this, then subscribe and give it a thumbs up because I'm gonna be doing a whole series where I talk about this. We'll do some recipe videos, some day in the life, some motivational videos. Just let me know what you'd like to see. Kind of like a series where you can watch along and feel comforted, like I said at the start, that you're following someone who's taking care of themselves from a positive point of view and not a toxic point of view. And I'm gonna be sharing cozy, comforting, nice things that are hopefully gonna make you feel cozy and comforted in your weight gain and, and bring that self-confidence back in yourself and maybe adopt some habits that you can move forwards with that are gonna develop a healthier relationship with food and your body. So stay tuned. We'll start with a nice video next week when you watch this and I'll answer some more questions. You can always leave your questions and your requests for what you'd love to see from me within this series and I'll make sure to include them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and your questions and I hope this has helped you. I will see you in my next one. I'm gonna go enjoy the sunshine now. <laughs>